Hello everybody, Stuart from Roku here. Today I want to make a quick video about datasets and troubleshooting your datasets if you are seeing errors in them. There are a couple of useful tools that can help you to troubleshoot your datasets and remove any errors. The first of them is going to be a text editor tool called Sublime. It's free to use, you can download it and use it. And it's super easy to quickly see any errors. The second tool we're going to look at is jasonlint.com which is a website that lets you check the JSON validity of your data set. Now, when you are creating a data set for fine tuning, you are going to create multiple rows, which every row will be an example of the system message, the input message, and the AI output message. So what we want is we want row, row, row of all of these and every single row needs to be valid JSON. So by making this video, I want to make it super easy for you to check your data set and make sure that it doesn't have any of these common issues. These are the commonest issues that I experience. So I wanted to make this video to help you help yourselves and make it super simple so you can be confident with fine tuning and your data sets. So let's get into it. So here is a dummy data set that I have. Usually when you do a fine tune with OpenAI and the new ChatGPT fine tuning, you will need at least 10 examples. But for the sake of this video, I just thought I'd show you one with three. So remember, if you are doing this in reality, make sure you have 10 examples before you do the fine tune. You'll see that the rows, we have the first, we have the second and the third, and we are using a program called Sublime. I will link that in the description of the video if you want to use that yourself. And you see that we have system message, we have the user message, and then we have the assistant message. The assistant message is like the AI output message. The user message is what the user puts as their input and the system message shouldn't really change each time. So that should be consistent. And if I'm looking at this in my text editor, what am I really looking for with fine tuning? Well, one, I'm looking for that we have a nice tidy first line, second line, third line, et cetera, fourth line, fifth line for the different uh, lines. Because if I was to say, have something like this, where it's, oh, just some guy named William Shakespeare, and then there was a random enter in here for a line break, you can see that we have, now we have four lines, and I only have three examples. So something has gone wrong here, and I need to fix that. So I can do that by simply going back in and deleting that line break, and now we are back to three. So that's an easy thing to spot if you are really looking at a data set. The next thing to do if you need to see things on a more granular level is to copy each of the rows into JSON Lint. But there is one more obvious thing glaring out and looking at me when I look at this data set. Can you spot it? Well, it's these gray 0x19 characters here. These should not be here. And where these often come from is where you copy stuff online. So when you're copying from a website or similar, you may be thinking, oh, I'm copying a, a little uh, symbol. Whereas in, in reality, it is a different character, which would then break the JSON. And I'll show you that in a second. So. If you see any of these gray characters, these zero X 19 in the sort of square brackets like that, then you will need to take action on your data set. And the quickest way to do this would be to come into your text editor and I would put my cursor next to it at the end. I would hold my shift key and press the uh, left arrow key button and then I would copy this. So I copy this to my clipboard. I then do Command F or Control F if I am on a uh, on a Windows machine, and I would hit the button to paste in that weird character. And you'll see that it's now found both of those. So what I could do is I could say Find All, and then it will highlight both or all of those examples at the same time. And 
what I really want is this single uh, quotation mark like this, and that would fix the issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and leave it in there because I will show you how this looks when we go to uh, Jason Lint to troubleshoot this further. So let's go over to Jason Lint and see how we can fix up our Jason. So we are in jasonlint.com and this is a testing tool for your Jason. So what you want to do is you want to copy each individual row from your Sublime dataset and paste it in here and then hit the validate JSON button. You are looking for a green success message below where it says results with valid JSON. If it doesn't say valid JSON, then there is something that needs to be fixed. So let's have a look at our data set, which is just three rows. So I'm going to copy the first line into here and you'll see it's at the top here nothing really crazy about it but when i hit validate json it works it's valid json so i know i know now i can be confident that this line is not the issue with any errors that occur when i am fine tuning my data set i know that this line is pretty good so i can then go and check my second line so I'll copy that to my clipboard. I'll come back to Jason Lint. I will hit Command A or Control A to get everything here. And I will delete it. And then I will hit Command V or Control V to add that here. And then I can hit Validate JSON. And you see, again, I have a green success message with Valid JSON. Happy days. The final thing to do is to go to our third row we copy that to our clipboard and I'm expecting this one to error because it has those weird characters in it that we haven't removed. And you'll see here, they have even show up as like a little red dot here, which is a bit weird. So if I hit validate JSON, oh no, I have an issue. And it's going to tell me where the first issue appears within. So the first issue appears on this line and I can fix it. Well, me saying line is probably not the right word because we are having this all on a single line. It's just sort of, it creates a text like this to give you a better overview of what's going on with the message being the top thing and then all of these other fields nested below it as, as, as variables. So what we are gonna be doing is we are gonna be fixing this by deleting that weird character and then we're going to put a single quotation mark in that like we should have and now if we hit validate json we see that this one is now showing okay and this one is not okay so what we need to do again do that for this one and we have a valid json so that would be the way to do it. And then if it was something that I had taken from the sheet where I fixed that, so I'm just fixing that in my Sublime text editor now, and then I'm gonna copy that across just to show you that it's another way of fixing it if you don't want to do it in uh, JSON Lint itself. So this is fixed up. You see I removed it here and I've also changed it here. And I hit validate JSON, we get to the same conclusion. So those are two easy ways. And if I am having problems with a data set and I can't really pinpoint it, then there is a method to, you know, add each line individually to JSON, then hit validate JSON, make sure that they are valid and see what's going on. You know, this is usually an okay method if you have sort of less than hundred, but if you have more lines than that to check, then it can be quite tedious to do it. And, really looking at things in a text editor should help you spot the main errors. Now, there are other common issues that can occur with uh, a data set if you're copying from online and you don't understand the sort of JSON format. For example, you see everything in this uh, valid JSON is encased in double quotation marks. So we have the quotation marks and anything in it is 
valid JSON. But what if I put a random quotation mark in the middle here and then I hit valid JSON? Well, we're going to have an error because that breaks the structure of what we're trying to do. But what I can do is if I JSON, JSONify this uh, quotation mark by putting this random dash in there, then I hit validate JSON, I get valid JSON. So this is one of the most common things is if you have a quotation mark or a quote within the content that you're trying to create the data set of, then it's just making sure that you JSONify that and it's in the right format. You know, other things that I see causing this is like tab spaces. Um, tab spaces are quite a big one if you're copying from online web formatting uh, because it's easy to copy that and it's very hard to spot them because it just looks like a couple of spaces. But again, if you have that in a text editor, it becomes a lot easier to spot because you end up seeing, okay, I've got space, I've got space, I've got space, and now I've got this big space. What's going on here? So often when I do that, you, you just want to delete the tab space and change it to a normal space. So there are various ways that you can really structure your data sets. And I think taking on board the lessons with learning about using a decent text editor like Sublime or using a decent online platform for checking your JSON like JSONlet is super, super easy and super important. And it should help you troubleshoot and debug your data sets, which will give you a better time when you are fine tuning. I hope this video has been useful and you've learned a bit more about how to debug and check your data sets for any errors. I will link to Sublime and give the jasonlint.com uh, URL in the description below this video. Uh, if you want to be able to fine tune ChatGPT without having any coding knowledge, then you could do so on Bricky.ai today. We'd love to have you on board and help you with your AI needs with a large collection of the best LLMs in one place for you to explore, um, test and deploy your AI needs wherever you need them online. So thank you and see you next time.